Can I also pay tribute to everyone standing for election tomorrow? In particular, the plucky Conservative candidate for Wakefield. He's standing even though his own colleagues think he's so useless they held a vote of no confidence in him. Does the, does the, does the, does the Prime Minister... Does the, does the Prime Minister hold any personal interest in seeing if the public will vote for a Tory that even his own side don't think is up to it? Yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, I have absolutely no doubt uh, that the people of this country and the people of Wakefield, people of Tiverton and Holliton would much rather vote uh, for a solid Conservative yeah. government uh, than, for a, than for a Labour Party. Uh, there are enablers and acolytes in the Liberal Democrats, Mr Speaker. The chameleons, the, the karma chameleons of British politics, are when, the, when the leader of the Labour Party hasn't even got the gumption, Mr Speaker, to speak out against the rail strikes... Yeah. Uh, the of the people in the north of this country, up and down this country. Uh, absolutely unbelievable silence uh, from the leader of the Labour Party, Mr Speaker. But uh, he's obviously not been to Wakefield recently. <laughs> he's crashed the economy. He's put everybody's tax up. The last Tory sent up to Wakefield being convicted of a sexual assault. That's not much of a pitch, Prime Minister. Yeah. Talking of people not up to the job, whilst the Transport Secretary spends his time working on his spreadsheet tracking the Prime Minister's unpopularity. <laughs> Thousands of families have had their holiday flights cancelled. Yeah. It takes forever to renew your driving licence or passport. Yeah. And now we've got the biggest rail strike in 30 years. Yeah. If he is genuine... If he is genuine... <laughs> if he's genuine about preventing strikes, will the Prime Minister tell this House how many meetings he or his transport secretary have had with rail workers this week to actually stop the strikes? But what we've got to do is modernise our railways. And it is a disgrace when we are planning to make sure that you don't have ticket offices that sell fewer than one ticket every hour, Mr Speaker, that he yesterday had 25 Labour MPs out on the picket line Mr Speaker, I'm surprised he's giving me advice about my team. If I do need advice, let's say about a £100,000 job at the Foreign Office, I, I will ask him for recommendations. Uh, and, and there you, Mr Speaker, there you have it. The Prime Minister of this country and his Transport Secretary haven't attended a single meeting, held a conversation or lifted a finger to stop these strikes. We know why he takes the line he does. We know why he won't condemn the strikes. We know why even now he hasn't got the gumption to call out uh, his, his MPs who are going out, on, uh, going out to support the pickets, Mr Speaker. Uh, the reason his authority is on the line in this matter is that they take, they take £10 million uh, from the unions, Mr Speaker. That's the fee, That's the fee that m the learned gentleman opposite is receiving for the case he is failing to make. He can't help himself. There's a huge problem facing the country, and all he's interested in doing is blaming everyone else. Can't he hear the country screaming at him, get on with your job? Yeah.